Just like last year, we have two flagship Galaxy smartphones. The S7 Edge continues the pledge from Samsung to deliver a phone with a curved screen. Now, from afar, it might look very similar to its predecessor, but there's more to it than meets the eye. Hey guys, John V from Phone Arena here, and you're watching our video review of the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. We won't get into every part about the phone, just because it closely follows the S7's performance. So with that in mind, you're getting a phone that's blazingly fast with its Snapdragon 820 chipset. Of course, that's for the US bound versions of the phone, but we're still curious to see how the Exynos brother pans out for the international versions. Gamers will particularly love its top-notch performance, especially have no interruptions come up thanks to the new game launcher feature. TouchWiz here is still pretty much TouchWiz of old, except that it's running on top of Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. It definitely is one of the more complete custom skins out there, clearly finding the space between power users and those who prefer something more streamlined. Call quality has been vastly improved over its predecessor thanks to the stronger output of the earpiece and the great clarity exhibited on both ends of the line. However, the speakerphone, just like the S7, is underpowered in comparison to its predecessor. It reaches a peak output of 72.9 decibels, which is less than its predecessor. Despite that though, the headphone jack dishes up a more delightful experience with its stronger output. And of course, it's still mesmerizing when it comes to watching videos. As for the new 12 megapixel camera on the back, it works exceptionally well on the automatic. Photos captured by it are superb as always, but the biggest improvement is in its low light performance. In fact, the larger 1.4 micron sized pixels it captures in conjunction with the new dual pixel technology for faster focusing makes low light images appear brighter than its rivals. And that's without too much noise or degradation to its overall quality. And the same can be said about its video recording performance. There are plenty of resolutions to choose from, but they're all accompanied with sharp details, lighting, lightning fast focus adjustment, clear audio recording, and snappy exposure adjustment. Well, something weird happened when we pulled it out of our pocket. We noticed that the camera lens was cracked. It's tough to say what happened, but maybe something hit it squarely in the middle to cause it to shatter. That's a little bit concerning, but we hope that our case is an isolated one. Now, the first noticeable change here with the phone is its larger footprint. It's situated in between the S6 Edge and the S6 Edge Plus. What's really important to note is that it doesn't feel like a phone with a 5.5 inch screen, just because they're able to trim the fat and keep its screen to body ratio at an impressive 76.09%. Best of all, they've improved the design by eliminating the taper we saw with the metal trim bezel on the S6 Edge last year. So it isn't as sharp around the edges anymore. And when you combine the fact that it adopts the Note 5's curved rear edges, it simply makes it more comfortable to hold than last year's offering. And you know what's awesome too? It now has an IP68 rating for water resistance, meaning accidental spills, submersions, and using it in the shower or while it's raining outside are all fair game for this phone. That's undeniably impressive because how many phones can do that? especially ones with a killer design that packs a fingerprint sensor, a heart rate sensor, rapid charging, wireless charging, and expandable storage. None. And that's exactly why Samsung's design is a benchmark. The handset's larger footprint means we're also getting a bigger display, a 5.5 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED to be exact. There's more real estate, which is nice, and at the same time, it still continues to deliver solid qualities. The only change here, besides the size, is its lower 493 nit luminance. It's less than its predecessor, but doesn't adversely affect its performance under direct sunlight, so it's still more than usable there. Last year's introduction of the dual curve screen merely brought on features we thought of as novel at best. Many of them seemed rather unpractical, but Samsung has tweaked its worth, resulting in more practicality for its use this time. For starters, they've extended the Edge user experience to 550 pixels, so there's more room for content to show. Not only does it add yet another multitasking element to the experience, but the addition of downloadable Edge panels makes it more versatile. And there are even shortcuts for macros, such as instantly running the camera app to snap a selfie, as opposed to doing it yourself, and then proceeding to switch to the front-facing camera. Third-party support is light from the onset, but this is something we can expect to grow over time. Rounding things out, the larger size of the phone means that there's also a larger battery. Unfortunately though, even with the larger 3600 mAh cell on the inside, it seems to just get us through one day of normal use. 
It's still on the same level as something like the Motorola Droid Turbo 2. Power users will probably need to find themselves recharging a lot, but Samsung has improved its charging efficiency since it only takes 99 minutes to bring it back to 100%. And best of all, there's also the convenience of wireless charging too. Just as before, there's a $100 separation between this and the standard S7. So that turns out to be roughly $800 outright through most carriers. Yes, we know that it's expensive, but the difference here is more reasonable given the fact that we're dealing with a larger size phone, and not just an S7 clone with a dual curved screen. Add to that, the addition of water resistance and expandable storage makes it a complete package. If money's no concern to you, or you simply want the best of the best right now, the Galaxy S7 is a superb option. Rarely do we have a phone that packs so much cutting edge technology into one single device, but we do have it here. The only thing to consider is whether or not the size of the phone is to your liking.